Today I'm going to show you my Ice Shard Sorcerer build that's an absolute powerhouse in Diablo 4. So I'm going to go over everything that you need guys from the skills to the gear as well as the Paragon board. So let's get right into it. So starting off of course we always have a few things here that we are going to break down. The build is pretty self-explanatory. There's going to be a few controversy skills that you guys are going to be like, what? Why did you take this war instead of something else? But the build is super, super strong. So we're taking two points into Firebolt. You have to take at least one point in this, but you could put your other point anywhere else, whether it's Enhanced or Frostbolt, whatever. We just need two points to get down into our core skills. This is also going to be our first enchantment slot. So next we're coming in, we're maxing out Ice Shards as much as you can, five points in, and we're gonna go into Enhanced Ice Shards to Ricochet, and then we are doing Destructive Ice Shards. The reason we're doing Destructive Ice Shards is because we're in the end game, and making enemies vulnerable is a very, very important key element, not only for the vulnerable damage, but we trigger a bunch of damage once an enemy is vulnerable. In the earlier stages, you probably want to take greater ice shards, so that way when you have a barrier active, ice shards is treated as if enemies are already frozen, which is really important because of the enhance when an enemy is uh, has a chance to ricochet, and it always ricochets if an enemy is frozen. Next, we're doing one point in devastation for a little bit more mana, but three points into elemental dominance because our mana is always going to be full. So 90% of the time, we're going to get a free 9% increased damage when cast above 50 mana, which is really, really strong. Next, we're going to come down to our defensive skills. Now, for ice shards, guys, in the early stages for leveling, you're going to have to have a basic or core skill, or excuse me, a basic skill. But after that, you start to get a little levels. We're playing all four defensive skills, okay? So before you take flame shield, you're going to want to keep the point in there. But once you get towards the end game, we're doing one point in flame shield only. We only want this as another way for unstoppable to break because crowd control in the end game is an absolute horrendous thing, which just sucks. So one point in flame shield, we are taking three points in elemental attunement to have critical strikes have a chance to reset the cooldown. However, through testing, you can really take the points out of this and just have 5%. Your cooldowns are going to be reset because of our high lucky hit chance anyway. So if you want, you can definitely put them into other skills like you can max out teleport, come down and max out another defensive skill if you really wanted to like ice armor or something like that. However, we're going to take our one extra point and I'm going to put it in another skill in just a moment. So one point in ele uh, elemental attunement, if you feel like the 15% is really good, then do it. But you're going to have such high lucky hit chance, it's not going to matter anyway. Three points in the glass cannon. Now we are going to be a flashing in or teleporting in, freezing everything and doing an insane amount of damage. But we're going to be so like bulky and defensive. We're going to be so tanky in some ways that the extra 9% damage that we take really isn't a big deal. So we got glass cannon there. Next, of course, Ice Armor with one point to enhance the Ice Armor for Mana Regen. Now, if you really feel like your mana is done through your gear and you really have infinite mana as far as like everything else, I'm missing a few things on my gear pieces, which is why I have the Enhanced in here. But next, we have Ice Armor, guys, into Enhanced Ice Armor for a little bit more Mana Regen and just have an, an additional barrier, okay? We don't need to add any extra points into Ice Armor or Flame Shield. You really don't need that. Then, of course, the main skill of the build, Frost Nova, we max out the points in here. We got 10. We want to lower the cooldowns of all of our defensive abilities as much as possible so we can spam them. Okay, we unleash that. Then killing enemies as a chance to reduce the, uh, the cooldown, which is awesome, up to four seconds per cast, which is huge. So that turns this into a six-second cooldown. Then we have Mystical Frost Nova to make enemies vulnerable, and it lasts even longer on bosses. Then we're going to come down, we're going to max Precision Magic, guys, for that increased lucky hit chance, which is going to help proc a lot of our things. Now, into these passives, you're really going to be like, well, where's the extra points, War? So one and two align the elements, and then Mana Shield is very, very important to give us damage reduction. So this extra point is where I'm going to add this. We want to have as much damage reduction as possible. It's going to make us as tanky as possible. Now, once we get into the Paragon board, you're going to see why I only have one point in here, but... If you don't and you feel like you're always going to have the barrier from killing enemies or frozen enemies, then you don't need this. However, I keep the one point in here just in case until I kill frozen enemies. So that way on my cooldown skills, I'm always able to have the barrier which helps triggers my lucky hit chances. Okay. Now coming down, we have into our mastery skills. One point to inner flames only used to get to devouring blaze for that 30% increased critical strike damage against burning enemies. Super strong. Then we're coming down to ultimate skills. Uh, we are maxing out 
Permafrost for more damage against elites, which is super good against bosses. Icy Touch for more damage against vulnerable enemies, which everything should be vulnerable. And then Frigid Breeze for on a lucky hit, have a chance um, to, to generate more mana back, which is going to help us be infinite mana sorceress. Now we have three points into Horror Frost from an item contribution, which we're going to get into. Now, if you do not have the item contribution here, we need the three points in this. Okay, you have to have this for more damage. So I would advise taking two points out of this and then one point out of your teleport to come down and put the three points into here if you want. Okay, but you have to have this. Then last but not least, we're doing one point into Inferno in an uh, Enhanced Inferno or Inferno Prime uh, that pulls everybody in. We're going to be a little bit more offensive instead of defensive because we're going to be super tanky anyway. So this just allows us to pull all the enemies in. We can freeze them and then detonate them. Now down to our key passive guys. I always go back and forth between these two and it's really up to you. Avalanche in the end, I believe is better because your frost skills have a chance to make your cost of ice shards cost no mana, which allows us to spam even more and do increased damage. If the enemy is vulnerable, it's a 20% chance, which they're always gonna be vulnerable, which is huge. This is much better than shatter when it comes to bosses, elites, you know, big dungeon bosses, world boss, anything like that. Avalanche is superiorly better. Okay, superiorly? Superior. Okay, so that is the skills, guys. So now once we get into um, our character here, we're going to go to the skill slots. So you're going to have Firebolt Enhancement. All of our damage makes enemies burn, which is awesome. It helps trigger some of our passives. Next, we take Ice Shards at 25 because this is just silly if you don't take it. Okay, the enhancement, ice shards automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies. Pretty much everything is going to be frozen and vulnerable. It's going to be insane. Okay, now you do have some options in the skills. If you really didn't want to take Inferno, you can always do Deep Freeze. You just take an extra point out and you make this into the big one just for a little bit more defense. However, I like Inferno just as more offensive because we are going to be very, very fast. Now, into our... Uh, gear and as well as our paragon board which we'll do last into our gear there's going to be a lot of items here that we're going to be swapping in and out uh, but i think i pretty much have everything that i want for the build which makes it incredibly powerful okay so into our gear slots i have this insane weapon as you guys can see my attack power goes up by like 600 almost however the reason that i'm continuing to use the rattling bones of piercing um cold is because the core skill damage, vulnerable damage, and then the intelligence. Okay, the damage up close is good, but the vulnerable damage is humongous as well as core skill damage. However, this thing just works because damage to chilled in close enemies is great and intelligence is awesome. Stunned really doesn't do anything. But into our gear slots, of course, we have to have ice shards, guys, pierce up to four times, dealing 20% less damage per subsequent hit, which is awesome. You have to have this. You can get this in the dungeon. Next in our helm, we have lucky hit chance is increased by 19% while we have a barrier. We will always have a barrier. So we will always have this bonus. It is not reflected in your damage sheet. Next in our chest piece, this is one that I personally like. Okay, I personally like this. However, you have some options. And the reason that I put ice armor makes you unstoppable for three seconds is because crowd control in the end game is horrendous, especially against a sorcerer because naturally they're slower. However, we are going to be super, super fast. Okay, we're going to be incredibly fast, and we're gonna—I'm going to show you one other option that you have to be even faster. But I like Ice Armor for the Unstoppable. However, I am this build does not require any uniques. It is super strong. However, this is slotted this way, so that way, if we do get remnants, we can swap this out, no problem. It's not a big deal. In our gloves, we have the Avalanche Key passive. You have to have this. It'll, uh, the Avalanche Key Passive now applies one additional cast. If you guys don't remember our Avalanche Key Passive, lucky hit, 20% chance to make Ice Shards cost for free and does 40% increased damage. This is going to cast a second time, which is awesome, which allows us to spam Ice Shards even longer. Into our pants, for more defense, we're doing Disobedience. Disobedience is probably one of the best defensive abilities that you can have in the game for more armor. Into our boots here. Now, however... This is where I forgot to swap these out. This is where we get super, super tanky or super, super fast is with Ghost Walker. While unstoppable and for four seconds after, we gain 22% increased move speed and can move freely. 
okay so frost or cast ice armor makes us unstoppable as well as flame shield makes us unstoppable and teleport makes us unstoppable which gives us a huge amount of movement speed allows us to clear dungeons really really fast now if you guys don't want to go that route you can definitely make some changes here there's some other defensive skills that you can use if you really really want to however i like this because i like to be speedy now this doesn't really take away from the build however i do like the category on these boots this is why i kept these out the four ranks to frost nova is awesome but the three ranks to teleport is even better to allow us to get around even more if you guys can get boots that give you ranks to frost nova teleport and another defensive skill or mana reduction as well as resource regen and or change out dexterity to intelligence boom you have almost best in slot um boots which makes it really really strong or what you could do is teleport frost nova mana cost reduction and then movement speed so i'm looking for those boots but until then i like ghost walker in our offhand we are doing elementalistic uh, orb or elementalist core and master skills cast above 100 mana gain crit strike chance 34 percent our mana is going to always be super super high so we're always going to be able to cast this no matter what next into our amulet you deal 45 percent increased more damage to stunned frozen or mobilized enemies most enemies are going to always be frozen so this is a huge damage boost now this is also the three points of horror frost passive that we get from this skill however you want to swap if you can get it you want the three ranks of Horfrost. That needs to be three ranks of either Devouring Blaze and Defensive Skills, both, etc. Like, I only have one rank of Defensive Skills here. I wish that was three because it would just be awesome. Next in our ring, Progeny. Using a cooldown gives you more mana. This allows us to infinitely spam even more. It makes us infinite mana. Next, one of my personal favorites is Accelerating Loop. Increase critical strikes. Uh, you get critical strikes with core skills um, increase your attack speed for 23% for five seconds. You are going to be critting a lot. So having this just allows you to spam even more, especially on the instances where we can cast for free. You are just going to be demolishing enemies. So that is the last uh, piece of legendary powers that you need for the build. There is some, there's some customization here. Like if you didn't want to do ice armor, you could do, um, you get an extra frost over cast but the cooldowns longer there's there's plenty of different options guys this is just what i like for me for this build into the paragon board okay so this board has been messed with just a few times and just tweaked but i have found that this is what works best for the ice shards build okay so we're not going to go everything in too in depth but i'm just going to go over the highlights so we're going to be taking elementalist for non-physical damage for all of our ice skills our first one we're going to take is exploit to deal more damage against vulnerable enemies. Almost every single enemy is going to be vulnerable no matter what. Elemental balance, 20% more non-physical damage, huge. Then we're going to come into the uh, ice fall board. We're going to get ice fall. So killing a frozen enemy grants you a barrier. This is the other reason why if you did not want to take the passive that gives you a barrier on using a cooldown, this will always help you get a barrier for five seconds. I just like to double dip and at least have one point, so I always have a barrier. Then we have uh, Cryomancy, 20% more damage uh, for cold damage or always cold and chill. Then we're taking um, Destruction. Gives us a huge amount of crit chance, or, or excuse me, crit damage with our core skills. If you want to add more points into this, like more decks to really inflate this number, you can really, really do it. Um, you could definitely just take something out. Like, for example, if I take seven point damage away and I just add another dexterity node, that's just even more crit damage. Totally up to you. You guys can mess with this however you want. Then we have frost, more damage against chilled enemies. Remember, when you do freeze an enemy, they're 100% chilled. So this is always going to hit. Polar rune, 30% more damage against chilled enemies. Huge. Then we're going to come over to the uh, frigid fate board. Dealing damage to cold or dealing cold damage to vulnerable enemies increases your lucky hit chance. We're always gonna have this up to 15%, so we're always gonna get a huge boost there. Then we're taking uh, chilling, cold resistance, but we really just have this for the um, intelligence boost. If you didn't wanna do that, you could you know pop this point out, And but we have this for the extra decks here for our tactician glyph. Okay, the cold resistance is nice, but we take it for the increased vulnerable damage. Okay, and it gives a huge bonus to all rare nodes like this one. 
and our weakness node for even more damage against vulnerable enemies. Then we're gonna pivot off here. We're gonna go grab oppressive for even more vulnerable damage. Then we're gonna come up and we're gonna take the burning instinct board. We're not getting the, um, the legendary power here, but we're gonna grab safeguard for damage reduction against elites. This, this little section here is gonna help us be a little bit more tankier against elites. Kindling, more damage against burning because everything's gonna be burning from our damage skills. Huge boost there. Then our node, we are taking control. 76.7% damage against crowd control enemies. Remembered when they are chilled, slowed, stunned, frozen, they are all crowd controlled and we get a boost damage there. Then we have smoldering embers for more damage reduction against enemies that are burning. However, if you do feel tanky, you could always take points out of this and just add points somewhere else. But it's it's extra because you want the dex bonus for here for control. Then we have cinders, more damage against burning enemies, huge. Then our last board that we're taking, guys, is going to be our Elemental Summoner board. I'm not quite done because I'm only level 91. But you're going to come down. You're going to take almost every single node here. That's going to give you... You can take, actually take the point out of there. That's going to give you uh, extra mana. Absolutely huge. Then we're going to come over and we're going to end up taking our final Glyph slot, which is going to be Control. Okay. Or excuse me, Unleashed. Or Unleash. This node is going to help us give a 54% bonus to all magic nodes within the range. But more importantly is after we spend 50 mana, we're going to deal increased damage and have increased mana regeneration for three seconds. This is always going to be going off and we're always going to have infinite mana. So that's the Paragon board, guys. Build is super, super insane, super, super strong. So like the video, guys. Comment down below. What do you guys think of my Ice Shards build? And don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.